What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the BMW X3 M competition. This is super exciting because it's the first time that BMW has launched their X3, their most popular seller, in an SUV with an M badge. And not only a regular M badge, an M badge that represents its 50th anniversary. And that's why when you look around this car, you'll see a brand new logo. Sick, 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 sick. No, no, no! And this is a mid-cycle refresh for the X3 in general. But now that it's a full M, there's so many beautiful pieces to this thing. It's an SUV, the world's gonna want it. But what about its competition? Thank God we reviewed the Porsche Macan GTS. It's direct competitor to this thing. That is cool, because we did it. So now I can say how this thing is better or worse. Stay tuned. So there are eight fresh colors that you can buy on the individual package when it comes to the X3. Eight more subscribers when you smash that like button. We need every single human that watches these videos to subscribe and like. We don't talk about it much, but today's important because we have something special. Five hundred three horsepower, four hundred and seventy-nine pound-feet of torque. Out of this beast, foot the ground and this thing buggies. But forget boogieing. This thing handles. This is a mean. Bad machine. It's so wild, man. It's so wild. It does feel a little bit top heavy. I will not lie. A little bit top heavy. But man, this thing is like vicious. It's so vicious that my neck is just lurching forward. I, I just feel like I want to relax, but it's impossible. I rip around this corner here. Perfect steering. Hooks in well, great balance. The feedback is so good, direct, it's smooth. I know exactly where the SUV is. I know what I'm leaning in. I know where my weight's getting transferred over. I feel totally full control of this thing. On the corner, great visibility, foot to the ground. This thing is a machine, man. It's a machine, it's a machine. sell against an M3. Four door, this is like a, basically an M3, but sits higher, way better visibility. It's like a hot hatch. You can fit all kinds of crap in the back. Kids can fit in it. It looks cool. I don't know, man, it's hard. It is a bit, again, it's a bit top heavy and super stiff. Anyways, foot to the ground. Build boost. I'm supposed to shift. So to the front, and there's a lot. They've redesigned it, they've tightened up a few things. So let's start off with these Shadowline headlights. They're slimmer, they're tighter, they're a little bit longer. They make it look more sharp and edged. Of course, I talked about the logo, it's the 50th anniversary. It's super cool to have that because it's distinctive. So next year, it's not gonna be there, just for the 50th anniversary. And that's a really nice touch from BMW for those passionate enthusiasts to be like, hey, look what I got, it's different. You know what year it is, you don't have to search 
the VIN number to see what year this thing is. Kind of cool. And moving down, you have larger kidney grills, but they are nice. They actually look good. It fits this X3M. It's not the ugly stuff that we saw right when these things came out in the sedans with the longer ones. <coughs> these are kind of nice. Now incorporated, you have the front camera. This has a ton of safety features like traffic jam assist. It keeps in your lane. It steers for you. It's got something called evasion assist, cross traffic alert. All that stuff is all incorporated right on the windshield and right underneath here. Obviously, BMW safety and all the rest of it is packed in here. Underneath that is where the action really starts. This front bumper has vertical beams that flow air right into the intercoolers on both sides. But there are two cool parts about this. One is you have inlets here that cool the brakes. And the second part is through the kidney grills, you can see a cross brace. It goes like this and like that. That's super cool. I've never seen a car like that. When you look in, you actually see bracing. Now, BMW says M is the strongest letter in the world. I think it's more like the most volume product in the world now because they make so many variants and so many models of the M car that the brand M is just so large. It's bigger than Acura. Like they make more M products than Acura makes cars and SUVs. That's how crazy it is. Depending on where you live in the world, you can get 17 different variants of the M. It's what? So moving along the side, these headlights really sharpen up the angle from the front. Now obviously the stance is lower because this is an M model. You get two choices of wheels, but it's the shoes that matter, like everything today. These things have Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, my favorite tire of all time. Michelin, will you please sponsor us? Nonetheless, these things have cross-drilled brakes on the front. They've got a lower stance, as I said. You've got some M pieces like this side mirror and these functional little tiny baby vents right there and then it continues on from there with these cool little side skirts that slide out very so gently you don't really notice it in this green but i can see it right here and it's nice and wide definitely different than the regular x3 and moving to the back this thing does have a specific rear differential that can transfer up to 100 percent of power to the back it doesn't have a specific mode like the m5 that you can make this completely rear wheel drive it is still x drive but that's okay because you've got 265 wide to hold and pull that power to the ground. So to the back, we'll start off with the top and this spoiler is ultra aggressive. I like how it's shaped out. Yes, there is obviously a third brake light hidden in there. That's pretty standard, but the way this thing shapes upwards and over, it's pretty awesome. And it's moving below. There's not a huge change in this obviously glass and the way this fins out, but these things are all new. They look like halo swords. They're darkened. They have this three effect and it really pulls the car and makes it look really, really wide. And then of course that rear bumper does the same as well. You have the black, you have this rear valence, you have these monster, monster exhaust. Four inches. Now this is not M competition specific. This is just an X3. So let's push this up. You can set the height of this thing by holding this down. But how much room do we have? Now in terms of depth, we have 41. And in terms of width, we have 44. And then underneath here, you do not have a spare tire because this is 2022. You do have an air compressor. And they have this weird sort of thing here. I guess maybe put an umbrella. But another weird thing is you have on both sides, you have this little foam thing and a connector and it says M and it points that direction. If anybody knows what that is, comment below because I have no idea. It's this little squishy thing here and it's got this little pin and I try to pull it and it doesn't let me. It's stuck in the car. Ooh. The inside looks very similar to the regular X3 with some M touches. Specifically, these Midrand beige and black seats, they're very sporty. They hold you in very well, very similar to the M4. Obviously, they have the illuminated M badge, which is an amazing touch at night. When you walk into the car, it automatically illuminates and opens up, and then these lights come on and look sick, because you're like, that's my baby. And then the next biggest M piece is the steering wheel. You've got two M modes, M1 and M2, that can be fully customizable to your settings. So for me, I like the engine to be super aggressive, suspension to be as soft as possible, and steering to be as soft as possible because when I run around town, I want this thing to be quick, but also be somewhat comfortable, which is kind of a problem because this thing is the stiffest thing on the planet. But in keeping with the steering wheel, you have the nice M stitching. You have your red, dark blue, and then light blue. You also have the M logo on the bottom. But the unique part about this thing is that it still keeps the original BMW logo. It doesn't give you the 50th anniversary logo on the steering wheel, which is kind of weird considering it's everywhere else. 
And next up, you have this really small gear shifter. It makes you really feel like you're driving a manual car. Even the way you shift into reverse, it's like up and over, which is such a nice touch. It's not like dot, 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 dot. It's up, over, over, across, down and up. It's very manual based. So even though it is an automatic transmission, an eight speed at that, it still feels very dynamic and masculine. Can I say masculine? But if using the shifter is not your thing to switch gears, you can obviously leave it in sport or drive, but then you have the paddles, and the paddles have this little padding behind it. It's not just simply aluminum. You have this like touch feel behind that doesn't get cold or hot, is what I assume. It's nice to touch. It feels really good, really, really good quality. And that's probably why you pay this kind of money. This thing is $93,000 to start. This thing as equipped is about 107, so it's over 100K, which is a lot of moolah, but then again, you can put the kids in the back. So if we start off with the door panel, it's exactly the same as the regular X3. This does have a bit more frills. You have the carbon fiber, a little bit of ambient lighting, and then of course in the middle you have this midrand beige with some midrand beige stitching across this armrest here. So it's a nice touch, but again, pretty much the same as a regular X3. Same with the dash here. You have this nice big heads-up display, and you have some gauges that say X3M on it. Even the colors on the gauges have the M colors, but everything else is straightforward and pretty much exactly the same as a regular X3, with the exception of this infotainment. It is now 12.3 inches instead of 10.2 inches, so it's a little bit larger. And there is sport displays, which is what I keep it on. As far as software goes, this thing has something called Live Cockpit Professional, where you can customize your displays the way you wish. Even in terms of updates, it's all over the air, so it doesn't have to go to the dealer to get plugged in. So they're coming up to spec and speed with 2022. Everything else is pretty straightforward. The buttons are clean. They're nice, easy to use. There's a lot of X3M competition badges right in the center console. The one weird thing, though, is that this wireless charger does not seem to work. I tried two different phones, and no matter which way I slid it, up and down, it didn't really work. There is a USB right next to it so I can plug it in and hardwire it. There is wireless Apple CarPlay. I don't have an Android so I can't tell you, but in what I've read and researched, this same thing seems to have wireless Android Auto. And then you have two standard cup holders with a cigarette lighter. And then you have your shifter, as I mentioned before, and then all your typical BMW settings right there, including a start engine stop in red. Sweet. And then you have your M modes, your setup, and then your exhaust button. So the M modes give you three different modes when you hit this button, normal, sport, and track. And to activate track, you gotta hold this button down, and then it says track right there. Sweet. And then under the center console here, it's not very deep. You do have one USB-C and a pretty weak light. And then of course, you got a panoramic sunroof and the rest is pretty basic. Back seat of the X3. Now, very, very solid doors. They look solid, they feel solid when I open them up, so I feel safe when I put my kids in here because that is why I'm buying an X3M competition. The only reason, because of the kids. Otherwise, I'd be buying an M3 or an M4, unless I like to sit higher. So these seats are important. And these seats are flat. They're not as aggressive as I expected when I saw this thing. Now the stitching is very, very good quality. The feel is very good quality. I love the seat belts in the back. And speaking of coolness, if you are looking at a Macan GTS, you'd like to know that the middle seat belt in the Macan is regular black. Even though these ones were green, this one was black. But in the BMW, yep, all five of them get the fancy stitching. Sick, sick. Now these seats fold. 40, 20, 40, and when you pull this down, obviously you have a cup holder. This cup holder is the cheapest cup holder on the planet. This really has got to go because kids are not gonna put it up or down and they're gonna go like this and it's gonna smash and break. And that probably costs, I don't know, 500 bucks, 700 bucks, two grand, who knows nowadays. Now the kids do have heated seats on either side. They do have seat belts. You can obviously fit three kids back here. They do have two USB-Cs and that's about it, not USB-A. And there's only two of them, not three. They do have vents here, which obviously at this type of price point, you'd expect it. And as far as visibility back here and height, I'm 5'9 and I have a ton of room. So somebody six foot two could easily fit back here and have space. And as far as visibility, these seats are nice because they tuck in at the top and I can see all the way around me. So yeah, back of an X3M. So let's talk about competition. The Porsche Macan GTS, because they no longer make a turbo. Now that thing's about $10,000 more than this. That thing also makes 434 horsepower, which is way down on horsepower, like 70 horsepower less than this. It is just not as brash, not as rude, as raw, as aggressive as this thing. The transmission is better. I do like the Porsche PDK better than this thing. Well, for one, it's a Porsche. So would I take a Porsche over a BMW? Uh, probably yes. This is still an X3, and a Macan is still kind of a Q5, 
but it's still a Porsche. And that, that feeling doesn't go away. And when you drive it, the Porsche is definitely a bit more nimble. It just seems to do corners easier. It just feels like it flows better. This is a little bit jerky in some sorts of way. It's definitely bumpier. The Macan is not as bumpy, but also seems to handle well. It gets to throw its weight better. This thing weighs 4,600 pounds, so it is a bit hefty in some senses. This thing is way quicker. This thing does zero to 60 in like three and a half, 3.6 seconds. That does it in like four, 4.1. So it is quicker. Obviously it doesn't sound like a big number, but at those numbers, it is definitely faster. Maybe like a car length and a half. This is definitely bigger. Like there's more space inside this thing than the, than the Macan. It's so tough. Would you get the GTS nameplate versus the M nameplate? Ah, oh, what do you guys think? So if the question is, should I buy the regular M versus the competition? Like, why should I spend that seven grand and buy the competition? I get 30 more horsepower, a few other tidbits. Should I spend the money? Well, I guarantee you the dealerships are not going to be ordering the regular one. They're only going to be ordering the competition because it's only seven grand and something that costs this much is only 7% bump. It's nothing. Taxes are more. <laughs> the government. So all in all, would you buy a BMW X3 M competition? It's cool they offer it. That's cool. It's cool you can get all these cool color palette. That's cool. It works for the kids. That's cool. Sits higher. Cool. Good in the winter. Cool. You can't really drive an M3 in the winter, but you can drive this in the winter. Winter tires probably cost you like seven grand, but hey, who cares about money, right? It's just hard to pick whether you buy this or the Macan GTS. I don't know, man. I like the front of this. I like how boxy and aggressive this thing looks in the front. The Macan GTS is kind of rounded. I don't really like that Porsche headlight vibe thing on an SUV. In the cars, it's cool, but in the SUV, it's kind of weird. The side, I like the exterior of this thing better, for sure, than the Macan. I do like the interior of them both. I think they're both equally as nice. There's no doubt I like the steering cluster of this better, but it's around the twisties that the Macan totally edges this thing out. This is very stiff. It's kind of like a brick. That thing is just more like, nimble on its feet it just feels like lighter and easier and more tossable also as secure and as safe it just comes down to preference so you guys let me know in the comments below which you guys would pick would you pick this or would you pick the macan and as always please 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 subscribe we re rarely ever push that but we really need all the help we can get because subs make a difference so we got to pump it up we need your help so as always thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed once again smash that subscribe button Catch you in the next one.